Rated M for Mature. So I'd like to welcome Ken, Pontac, and Warren Graff to the PGTV episode 3. We're doing this over iChat, something we've never tried before. Mark has an enormous head because of it. And, uh, Thank you. And Thank hopefully you. this is going to work out. Um, Ken, Warren, you guys wrote the announcer scripts for Mad World. Um, but Mad World's not out yet, so you're not incredibly rich and famous for that one yet. So what are you no. incredibly rich and famous for? Uh, well, uh, forget the rich, uh, especially <laughs> these days. But uh, famous, I would say that Warren and I are probably pretty famous for Happy Tree Friends. Yes. Uh, that's, that's a big deal most places. Surprisingly uh, a big deal. Yeah. I get a pretty good reaction from it. Mm-hmm. Uh, another thing that I did that's a, a pretty big deal is I wrote a song called You Are a Pirate for a show called Lazy Town that is a giant meme on the Internet with all sorts of mashups and drunken karaoke versions. And there's some really disturbing versions, too. Uh, you kids should check it out. Ken, I noticed you didn't mention um, Moonstruck at all in your um, in your little bio there. Uh, according to IMDb, wow. you have some uncredited uh, visual effects work on that That's on in that true. movie. Wow, you did your homework, dude! You did your homework. I'm very impressed. Um, yeah, <laughs> back uh, back several careers ago, I worked in uh, motion graphics and special effects in Hollywood. And my last job at uh, an effects house uh, called Robert Abel and Associates, which is no longer around, uh, was putting some of the big full moons in the sky in the background on the movie Moonstruck. Ah. So uh, yeah, just digging up images of the moon and, and compositing them in cityscapes. Wow. And I didn't get a credit for I that. I to touch you. Oh, yeah, God, what is, what's up with that moment. bullshit? How, how do you not get credit for that? Is this a political, some, th- some other guy? You it's know, the guild, the guild. It was the moon guild. Yeah, really. Um, you know, it's fine. I'm, I'm, I'm astonished I get credit for that at all. A lot of things that I've done, I, I don't even remember um, until I see them on YouTube or something weird like that. Usually done in a drunken stupor. Yeah, I'm in a Steve Perry video. Look for me in O Sherry in uh, the opening pan <laughs> across all the knights and ladies. I was a Hollywood extra. <laughs> oh wow! You guys are actually have also worked on uh, some pretty notorious video games, as well. Uh, really? Ken, you worked on Clay Fighter. 
I did, and, uh, uh, back in the day. And you did a little bit of work on uh, Deadhead Fred, right? Yeah, I, um, I worked on, uh, I wrote the, um, there's a couple of promos for it, yeah. Yeah, there were, there were a couple of promos before the game even came out. Um, I was actually pretty happy with that. I never played the game. I don't really play video games. Um, what? I, uh, I really think they're bad. I think they're <laughs> bad for uh, the youth of America. I think they're, uh, they're bad for, uh, for reading. Um, I think they're really the problem behind most things, uh, except for our school. I really I blame our school. <laughs> And uh, Warren, <laughs> I blame our schools for pretty much everything as well, actually. And Warren, you were uh, you were a part of one of my favorite video games of all time, BMX Triple X. <laughs> yeah, I wrote that game. I wrote that game. It was, uh, you know, it was uh, it took about five years to write it, and uh, it was nonstop. And uh, yeah, it, was... it really takes five years to write it. <laughs> it took like a month. <laughs> 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 Okay, yeah. So uh, I'm I'm curious what how was the project described uh, to you guys, and where was it at when when you guys uh, got involved uh, with it? It was uh, it was fairly early on in the project. I think uh, there was some animation um, and there was some recording of what the two announcers might sound like, but uh, the lines were were not particularly character driven at that point they were just saying some kind of goofy stuff oh he just got some manju sun the men darts as excited as, as that victim looked to be wearing bondage gear i'm gonna venture that was blood and i'm gonna venture that you're next if you don't shut up you know, we were given like it was like a two or three minute video of somebody playing the game yes and um you know uh where we got to see you know i don't think it was all the action but some of the actions that were going on and um uh where the lines and how the lines would fit in um, you know, that somebody had done sort of scratch audio, and, and we were given that DVD, and I pretty much watched that like over and over and over and over again just to try and get an idea when we were doing the first um, the first bit of the first scripts that we were doing for the uh, E3 demo. Yeah, the scratch yeah, audio and, was and actually the... mine, so that was me talking. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, mm -hmm. it sounded like a like a small girl was doing it. Or, yeah. Yeah, I thought, I thought it sounded kind of like a, like a pussy, like a, like one of those society of the pussies. Kind of. Yeah, it was, it was sort of like a baby voice of some kind. Yeah, like a baby <laughs> voice. It was like a baby voice. Yeah. A baby voice. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's what we it thought. Was a baby voice, yeah. So we tried to write to that, and that didn't work at all. That was yeah. just stupid. They said, no, no, make it like a man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So like, okay, cool. They also, they also told us that uh, we asked them where the line was, how far we should go, and they said, oh, there's no line. Go as far as you want. And then we just said, ha! Ah! That, that is like such a gauntlet. And I. Yeah, like, oh, that's like a challenge. It's like, oh, there's always a line, and, and we found it. They, uh, yeah. they rejected uh, several of our lines. I'll get you for that, motherfucker! Once they start to stumble like that, you can do any fucked up thing you want to them. Same principle as rupees! Question for you. Now that we've gotten your in Mad World, what was it like writing for this game? It was, for me, I, I described it to more than one person as a dream job. Um, my daily scenario would be to wake up in the morning, uh, check my email, see what Warren had sent me from the night before, because Warren would work, get get home from another job, and then work until 12, 1, 2 in the morning, and I'd be asleep. I'd check out what Warren had sent me, laugh at that, make notes, uh, have some coffee, go into my big, fat, black overstuffed chair, recline the seat, pour a bottle of whatever I was drinking, the dog would fall asleep in my lap, and I would just type and laugh all day while I aming Warren, who uh, should have been working at his other job, but was uh, working on Mad World. Hope your boss doesn't see this. <laughs> no, probably not. <laughs> it probably won't. No, it was, it was, uh, it was sort of like a, a, a way of getting stuff out, you know? It was like, it was like a cleansing experience. But, uh, you know... Uh, I think towards the end, though, I feel like in some ways we felt like we were a little drained because, you know, mm -hmm. we put so we wrote thousands of lines. And uh, and by the end, we weren't even sure if things were funny anymore. We'd be like, like, JP, you would write us back. Oh, man, that stuff was great. And we're like, really? OK, cool. Great. You know, JP like, would even we'd write stuff back and say that stuff was great. And I would, I would think, who wrote that? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't even remember <laughs> writing. I, I would write stuff in the beginning That's of the right. day. And Warren would make would say something about it at the end of the day, and I would think, 
wait, I wrote that like like last week, right? Because you're writing so many things. You know, the more things you do, it's like the longer you live. It's like a secret to, to feeling like your your life is extended by cramming events into it. When you're writing that much stuff, you just lose track of time and space and everything. And when you finally tear yourself away from the computer, you're drained. Yeah, Ken would send me, he would send me lines, and I thought they were his lines. And he was like, oh, these are great. And I'm like, yeah, these are great. You did a good job. And he's like, no, no, these are your lines, the ones that you sent me. I was like, oh, yeah, I, did. I wrote that. Yeah. And like, we, we, we had no idea who wrote what at a certain point. It was mm-hmm. like, okay, whatever. So did you guys settle into uh, roles as the two announcers? Did you guys go back and forth doing the, uh, the, the lines for one or the other? Or would you mostly, you know, would you play with each other's lines or would you add to them? How did it, what was sort of the dynamic? How did it work out? Yeah, basically what we did is we, we each took like a, a level. Well, in the beginning we sort of went from, we'd get one level, they give us a big chunk of stuff and we would go down for each scenario and, uh, you know, we'd be like, okay, you do one through 50 and I'll do 50 through 100 or whatever. And then we'd switch them back and send them back to each other. Um, then they started sending us multiple levels with multiple tabs in it. So we'd be like, okay, you take this whole tab, I'll take that whole tab. And we'd send it to each other and we'd give each other notes and things we thought, oh, you know, it might be funnier if you said this or, you know, it might be funnier if you said that. I mean, a lot of times we sort of left it alone, but if we saw something that needed changing, you know, we would change it. Yeah, and then there'd be times where, for some reason, one or the other one of us would just be, we couldn't think of anything to write for, for certain actions. Be like, I got nothing on this. You yeah. got getting any ideas for this? And and just sometimes a single word from the other person would spark a whole nother level of uh, ideas. Um, so it was it was a very, very much a back and forth for us. But a lot of it was done through uh, IM and through email. Uh, I think we had one day where we spent the day together and we because uh, we had some uh, builds of the game and we would play it. I, I would play, because like Ken said, he's, he doesn't like to play, or he doesn't, not that he doesn't like to, he's just not a strong, he's not strong when it comes to playing video games. I blame our schools. <laughs> yeah, I blame our video game schools. <laughs> and he, uh, I would play it and we would say something and we'd talk about it, you know, and he would write it down. And, and, but that was like, it was just like one day of collaboration where we were in the same room. And the rest of the time it was just like really a back and forth. Yeah, Sega, Sega America um, gave us both... Um, Periodically, would give us builds of the game that we would play on the Wii. Um, and Warren is adept enough at these things that he would say to me, oh, yeah, you know, I went up on the roof and I found these things. It's like, roof? Jesus Christ, I died like, I can't get past the fucking gate. You know? It, it was, for me, it was like pointless after a while to even try to play the game. He's all, I died of a stroke. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> exactly. That happen. Um, the, the most useful thing for me was uh, when I would get a build, uh, not a build, but uh, just somebody playing the game that recorded just kind of going through the levels, and that way I wouldn't die. I could just kind of watch what was going on. It allowed me no exploration, but at least I got an idea of what was going on with the game. And ultimately, I just kind of faked it. <laughs> I just made stuff up. Um, with Happy Tree Friends and now this, like, I think the natural you know, inclination when you finish a job and you're proud of it, you want to show your family... You want to show your friends, you know, you want to send clips or whatever to your parents. Like, do you do that with, with, with this kind of stuff, with Happy Tree Friends? And, uh, like, what, what are their reactions to it, you know, if, if so? Like, do they get it? Um, my, my mother still calls me an animator um, when she describes what I do to, to uh, her friends. She, she doesn't understand what I do. Um, <laughs> I don't send her Happy Tree Friends. She doesn't have a computer. I, I wouldn't send her a DVD. Um, she thinks that I still do the kinds of drawings I did when I was in high school that she has framed in her house. Basically, I stopped <laughs> existing and evolving once I left home. Um, all my other friends are totally into this stuff. Um, they know Happy Tree Friends. They, they understand it. They love it. Uh, they're going to love this game. Um, I've got, I don't have a Wii myself, and Sega was not kind enough to purchase one for me. Um, even though I asked for that as a bonus, um, which I think we both earned. And we also asked for a We're bonus. so getting this edited out. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> uh, but, but my friends with Wii's uh, are really looking forward to this game. And, so, and I'm talking about uh, a couple of my friends with Wii's are in their 50s and 60s. Uh, one of them has just turned 70, and he is really looking forward to playing this game. Yeah, and, and for me, like, I, I tell my family and stuff, and they... And they uh, 
you know, they they look at me like, how do you think of this stuff? Like they, my, like my mom will ask me that every time. How do you think of this stuff? Well, it's like the same question every time. I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> so, um, but I yeah, think about I, you, mom. <laughs> I just think about my childhood. <laughs> but uh, I, uh, but when I told people I was working on Mad World, like once I was able to tell people, because in the beginning they said, you know, don't talk about it. But once I was able to tell people, people were like, you're working on that? And everybody was really excited. So, you know, I think it had a good buzz. And, um, you know, with Happy Tree Friend, people say the same thing. You work on that? That's cool. Yeah. So that's why I was saying people people seem to know it, like, surprisingly. Like, when um, on uh, Facebook, the, the Happy Tree Friend group has, like, a, a 1.3 million fans. And I looked at the Star Wars group, you know, and I tried to look for other ones. And it had, like, 300,000 fans. I was like, how do we have more fans than, than Star Wars? But, but less know, money. <laughs> but much less money. How come I'm not living on a ranch? Hey, but doesn't George Lucas own... live around the corner from you, Ken? He does. He lives right down the street. I'm going to go Well, he's, he's actually in bed right over here. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wait, George. Oh, wait, George. <laughs> oh, wait, George. <laughs> oh, well. He'll be back. Step, 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 step